It designs itself. God, your wife is a boat. Internet is the Soviet Union. Hi here, Phil there. I made a website that's entirely run by artificial intelligence. It's infinite, it designs itself, it's absolutely horrible, and it might be the killer of the entire web dev industry and will put us all out of jobs. Here it is. God, this is horrible. So how does an idiot front-end developer like me build something like this? And how exactly does it work? And why is it so dangerous? HTTP is Galina. Just one more thing quickly, please like the video, it really helps. I wouldn't have had any idea of how to build it, but this is what happened. It was a sunny Sunday morning. I just ate a stray cotton ball and opened my e email mailbox. There I saw an email from my grandmother. Below that email was an email from Codecrafters, uh, offering me to try out their platform and become their partner. Oh, nobody has ever offered me to become their partner before. If only they knew this was a huge mistake. Marinated socks. The thing is, Codecrafters is a respectable platform, where you do challenges like build your own Redis, Git, BitTorrent or HTTP. And I am not respectable at all. Mm. Which is exactly why I went ahead and created a monster out of one of their completely harmless challenges. What if you discovered your wife as a boat? It could have gone even more wrong though. I almost built HTTP that insults people. By the way, just in case, HTTP, these four letters you see in the beginning of every URL, stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and not for hippopotamus tickling paradigals like I mistakenly believed for a long time. If Internet is the Soviet Union, HTTP is Galina, a true, assertive and devoted Soviet woman, a public library administrator in a city of Yakutsk. Galina has minions. She calls them servers. For example, Mikhail, a humble, middle-aged, middle-sized Soviet man. Mikhail is a server. Who or what does he serve? Well, he serves Svetlana, a curious and inquisitive middle-aged Soviet woman who likes to visit the library on Fridays, and browse. Svetlana is a browser. There is also, of course, Anastasia, Maria, Olga and Inakenti, Svetlana's friends, and Inakenti is just sick on his head. We'll focus on Svetlana. On Fridays, Svetlana likes to read a book called Beetroot Fertilization Techniques and How to Trick a Garden Mole into Exterminating Himself. But to read it, she needs Mikhail. So, to satisfy this necessity, Svetlana approaches Mikhail and says, Mikhail, bring book Beetroot Fertilization Techniques and How to Trick Garden Mole into Exterminating Himself. No. After which Mikhail quickly rushes to the depth of the heavily carpeted building, gets the book and emerges out of the darkness again to deliver it to Svetlana. This is how HTTP works. Internet is the Soviet Union. HTTP is Galina, the library administrator. Mikhail, who brings books upon request, is the server. And Svetlana, who requests books from Mikhail, is the browser. In the Soviet Union there is also Nadezhda, the post office administrator, Raisa, a different post office administrator, Pavel, a truck driver, Vladimir, a secret KGB phone booth operator, and who knows who else in this weird communist society. Who knows who else? It's a good name for a restaurant. So I thought the challenge to build my own HTTP in JavaScript sounded interesting. I mean, how the f- But actually, that's very easy. If you watched my other videos, you already know that I encourage stealing. So I discovered I could engage in this wonderful activity once more on code crafters. When you do their challenges, you can take a peek at how other people did it. And whoops! Still, I think it's a great way to learn by, by building your own thing, because you can later f*** it up. Basically, if you like me, and you find that the learning by making is the best way of learning, this platform might work quite well for you. This HTTP challenge should be even free this month, so give it a try and use my link in the description. I'm now a serious organization's non-serious partner. HTTP Penguin. So after I had my own HTTP, I absolutely needed to turn it into some bizarrely useless piece of shit. So I decided to have a chat with myself. What's an extremely useless HTTP server? Serves dinner, lunch, breakfast, serves in an army. Serves a frog, HTTP penguin, HTTP, HTTP pope, God bless you, God bless you son. What is a stupid HTTP server that just returns text, error 666, mocks your URLs, 
insults you. HTTP.mam makes an appropriate verses about your name. Sylvester Stallone drowned in a new cologne. Steven Seagal was more than a little dull. HTTP poop. Share a link with a loved one and let them know they're stupid. HTTP that insults you. Imagine somebody actually building this. Huh? Actually, I did. Just a couple of rhyming libraries, an array of verbs, a random function, the absence of any shame whatsoever, and there you go. I mean, this is just stupid, but the thing I ended up making is actually dangerous. I then fell asleep and Patrick Stewart, dressed as a homeless woman, came to me in a delirious dream and ordered me to make a server that is entirely controlled by AI. Here is how it works. It's actually quite simple. So I've written an AI prompt, the same way you write prompts on chat OCD, but in a script that runs on the server. When a browser sends a request, the server sends my AI prompt to Google Generative AI, Google's own version of chat LSD, also known as Gemini, gets a response from it in the form of a fully written HTML web page and sends it back to the browser. And that's it. There are two AI prompts that I've written. The first one is sent when you go to the home page, and it's this. And the second one is sent when you go to any other URL, and it's this. Each page that's generated by AI contains links that lead to pages that generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That also contain links that lead to pages generated by AI. That is why this website is infinite and contains the infinite number of designs. And whatever you do, you can't cause a 404 error on this site. To prove that, I tried a couple of URLs I made up myself. What to do if you are a raccoon? Is Pope a zucchini? What if you discovered your wife as a boat? Marinated socks. Is door a window? Microsoft Apple. Does Brad Pitt knit? What to do when you ate a log? You can make up any name of any non-existing book and Mikhail will bring it to you, as he will write it on the way. And here is why I think it all could be very dangerous. If we don't kill ourselves early, it's absolutely certain that in the future AI would get really good at web development, web design and creating content. And when that happens, web design and web dev would cease to exist as an industry, as it would all happen automatically, on demand, in a split second it takes a server to process a request. Will this put us all out of jobs, or am I just being stupid? Let me know in the comments, I'm really curious. And check the godfathers us, and check the code crafters. Learning and advancing while making is always the best way of learning and advancing for me. Or did I say that already? Thank you all very much for watching, like it if you liked it, this really helps. Subscribe if you haven't, don't forget to look up, and see you soon.